So what a busy day two it was for the Washington Commanders as they had made pick after pick after pick and they were involved in a trade with their division rival. Let's talk about it and much more. You too, what's going on? It's Juan Gotti here with another Washington Commanders video. And in today's video, we're going to be recapping day two of the NFL draft for the Washington Commanders as they had a buttload of picks that they made today. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. But before we do, make sure you guys go down below. Leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel if you are new, turn on post notifications so you can notify when I upload new videos like this to the channel. We're on the road to 7,000 subscribers, so please let the world know the king is back. Your man Juan Gotti is back covering our Washington Commanders. I know I've been gone for three months, and I know, I know, I know I haven't been here to cover our team. I'm back, though, when I'm ready to get my channel, our channel, back on track. So let's get to it. So the Washington Commander kicked off day two by selecting um, Zedarion Newton. Hopefully I said his name right. A defensive lineman out of Illinois. Now, I understand, right? We already have Jonathan Allen. We already have Deron Payne. And we have Fladarian Mathis. So a lot of people were very confused at this pick. Why did Washington do what they did? Come to find out, Newton was the best player available, the best defensive tackle in this draft, and some are even surprised that he fell to where he fell. A lot of people had him going in the first round. So, I understand that we already had some guys there at defensive tackle, but let's be for real. We don't know what Fidelian Mathis is, okay? He, he pripped to this point, really hasn't done nothing for us. Still got Jonathan Allen, still got Deron Payne, of course, but you add the best player available at the time, and that is going to be the theme of this draft. Washington is going BPA. We're not reaching for project players anymore like, like we did with Ron Rivera, turning and trying to hope players uh, turn into something. No, we're drafting players that we know is going to come in day one and contribute. So this guy, he may... Uh, excuse me, be a third down situational guy um, when he first gets onto the field. But as the years go on, as Jonathan Allen get older and maybe we part ways with him soon, this guy is going to be ready to take over at some point. So there is a, 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 a reason that they did what they did. He's a powerful disruptor. I mean, the guys one on one. He he he's winning all the time. Okay, he has a nice he has a nice swim move. He can create pressure from the interior, and you know that's the biggest thing that you need to do when you're trying to disrupt the quarterback's timing is interior pre uh, pressure. Him and Deron Payne can do wonders. Okay, so pick is cool. All right, uh, we got an A plus for that pick actually by Bleacher Report. Next up, we got Mike um, Mike Sim Sim Simristic. Hopefully, I said his name right. I know I butchered it, but. Quam Cornerback out of Michigan. Nick Saban, I don't know if you guys are watching the ESPN cast, but Nick Saban absolutely loved this pick for the Washington Commanders. They they were talking so highly about this kid. They said if he was about six foot six one, he would have been the number one pick in the draft ahead of Caleb Williams. Now I know a little bit of that is facetious. Like it has no way. But that just speaks volumes how good this guy is. He has very good leadership skills. Um, and he has very good playmaking skills. Like, we talk about wanting turnovers. We drafted Emmanuel Force, whatever. We drafted Quan Mon for that last year. And now we're adding another guy that creates turnovers. This guy can do it all. Um, and he gives me Quan Martin vibes from the standpoint of not the biggest guy in the world. But he's not afraid to stick his nose in 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 grown folks' business. He is uh, going to probably be that nickel cornerback that we've been so desperately missing in Washington. I know we've been wanting, we've been screaming, we've been crying for nickel cornerbacks. We thought we got that in Quan Martin, but it turns out we're using him more safety, at least in the last scheme. We now have that nickel guy for us, okay? The guy out of Michigan. And again, go back to watch the cast. I screen recorded it, so I may post a video later where Nick Saban was absolutely talking highly about this guy and um, how he got a, he got up close and personal view of him when Alabama played Michigan and, and when um, Ohio State played Michigan there in Ann Arbor and there in Columbus and how he um, he took charge. He was the vocal guy for Michigan, uh, even as a junior. So that's good that you have more vocal leaders in that secondary. So I love that pick too. 
Then next up, you have tight end Ben Sinat out of Kansas State. Now, Ben Sinat, he could potentially be our George Kittle. Now, here's the thing about Adam Peters that a lot of people have to remember. All of his work is done in the later rounds. That's why people are falling in love with our draft. Because a lot of his works is done in and damage is done in the later rounds. George Kittle, Debo Samuel, Fred Warner. List goes on. Tyler Nova Hufanga. List goes on about how many successful guys that they find in the later rounds. We probably got our George Kittle. Um, and again, Nick Saban talked highly about this guy. He said he's more, you have three, you have three types of tight ends, guys that can play hand in the dirt, guys that can play the H back, guys that can play out wide. He said that he is a master of two out of those three things, and that is being an H back and that is being a tight end that can go out wide. That is what we've been missing. I honestly am going to say this, and I know a lot of people may disagree, but we haven't had a legitimate threat of a tight end since Jordan Reed. I can honestly firmly stand on that. Like, we haven't had a genuine threat since Jordan Reed. And I'm talking, like, athletic, basically another receiver. Like, George Kittle is 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 one of the best tight ends in the league. And not necessarily saying this guy is going to be George Kittle, but if he can be just half of that. For what we've been missing at the tight end position over the years, if he can just be half of George Kittle, we'll be good, right? You still got Zach Ertz, a veteran leader, a guy that – single-handedly dominated this franchise uh, up close and personal. We got a taste of George Kill, um, uh, Zach Ertz back when he was with Philly, absolutely dominating us every single time we played it. So he's a much older guy, but he can be a veteran leader. Um, and then we still got Amani Rodgers that's going to be coming back from, from injuries. So we got some guys. We got some guys in that tight end room, and uh, this guy could turn out to be your tight end one. And I don't want to forget John Bates. Hopefully he's – I think he's still there. I could be wrong. Then after that – we had another pick. I'm telling you guys, we were loaded. We had Brandon Coleman, offensive tackle. Now, here's the thing. His his this draft pick, he got a beep. He got a beep for that draft pick. Um, a lot of people weren't really too fond about this pick because they feel like Washington needs to address the left tackle position, which we in fact do. Um, considering the fact that we no longer have Charles Leno on this roster and we haven't necessarily addressed the left tackle position because they feel like Brandon Coleman is more of a offensive guard. So they think that he'll he's better fit if he's kicked inside to guard. Um, but we already have Sam Cosme on one side. So maybe do we, do we put him on the left side? Do we um, maybe move Sam Cosme back out to tackle? I don't know what we're going to do here because we potentially drafted yet another guard. Uh, Braden Danes is still on the roster, uh, so not forgetting about him. But, yeah, you never know. Um, a lot of people have these opinions uh, how they think Washington is going to use certain guys, and they could very well be wrong or right. But apparently, according to some of the tape that you've seen, the guy pretty much does look like a guard. Um, he's a guy that is working better when he's not in space. And, you know, when you're, when you're a tackle, you are on an island, and – that can be dangerous for some players. And then last but not least, the Washington Commanders gets a wide receiver. Okay, that's another position that, um, you know, pretty much was lackluster that we didn't really target um, headed into the draft. And, yes, this is signed by one of the best wide receivers in Washington history, Santana Moss. If you want this, John, let me know. Um, Luke McCaffrey, and if that name sounds familiar, Christian McCaffrey's brother. So does that necessarily mean we're going to get Christian McCaffrey in the next couple of years? Maybe. Nah, I'm just kidding. But Luke McCaffrey, Luke McCaffrey, Christian McCaffrey's brother, wide receiver out of Rice. Um, a lot of people had him on their draft boards and had him coming up uh, pretty much early. So he's another guy that we can add to this roster, and he could potentially be wide receiver three. Um, it's not really too much competition at that position outside of Terry McLaurin, outside of Jahan Dotson, Jameson Crowder, um, you know, and uh, uh, Alameda Zacchaeus. Uh, Luke, McCaff Luke McCaffrey could very well be some a guy that can be a playmaker for us in uh in 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 this team and make an impact right away. Now I'm not sure if he's a punt if he can be a punt return a kick return. I don't know if he can be a special teams guy. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be Jameson Crowder's job. But you never know how he could find his way onto the field. The more things you can do is the better, especially when you're a young guy trying to make the roster. So Luke McCash Luke McCaffrey he had one of the fastest I want to say 20 yard shuttles. Um, if not the fastest 20 yard shuttle this past uh combine season. So he has some talent, great hands. 
Um, you know, and he has the McCaffrey genes. Ed McCaffrey, their father. Um, Christian McCaffrey, what do we need to say about him? One of the best, if not the best running back in football. So hopefully a little bit of Christian McCaffrey has rubbed off on his little brother and we got a steal. So I don't know about y'all, but this is how I'm feeling right now. And maybe because we have a new regime and um, they're still in the honeymoon phase. But this feels like the best draft Washington has had in years. Like I'm talking total draft. Um, obviously 2020 was a collapse. 2021 was mid 2022, you know, was pretty mid. Um, and 2023, you know, still early to judge those guys, but ain't nothing that has not felt like this. Like, this right now feels like a complete draft. If Washington can find a way to get a late round gym at tackle or something, um, you know, that will com absolutely complete our draft. But um, I'm excited for the final day of the draft. You know, Washington is having the um, draft party at the National Harbor tomorrow. So let me know if y'all are going to that. But that's how I feel, man. I'm excited about every single draft pick that we've made. We absolutely have killed it. Um, selecting BPA, and I love that we're selecting guys that we want to come in and make an immediate impact. We're not selecting project guys. Like, we're not selecting Braden Daniels. We're not selecting Jamin Davises in the first round. We're selecting guys that we want to come in here and make an immediate impact, and that's what we're doing. I love what Adam Peters is doing. I love what Josh Harris and Dan Quinn is all cooking up. I cannot wait for the seasons to start. And remember, your man Juan Gotti is back on the coverage. So all the people that may have scurried away, you know what I'm saying, because I I, I, have, I was away, um, let them know I'm back. If you're not getting notifications, turn that post notification bell off and back on. I'm back home, and I'm back ready to turn up and take over Washington Commanders Nation how I had it before I left. Shout out to each and every one of y'all. Love everybody. See y'all later. Let me know how y'all think about this in the comment section. I'm out. Peace.